Okay, so let's do this problem here for our week four problem, which we have steam pipe with inner diameter of 16, outer diameter of 20, length of one meter, and thermal conductivity of 50. And then it's covered with a four centimeter thick insulated material. And in order to reduce the heat loss, the thickness of the insulator is increased to eight centimeters. We are to calculate the percentage decrease in the rate of heat transfer, assuming that the conductivity uh, sorry, the convective heat transfer coefficient at the inside and the outside are uh, 1150 and 10 respectively, and their temperature differences remain the same. So I drew two little, um, so we have uh, two cylinders, right? They have the same length of one meter, so I drew both of them here. Let's just call them uh, A and change colors B. Okay, and the idea is, you'll see that I drew the right, down on the right bigger, because we have now a thicker insulator on the outside, right? So what we're interested in is is what was the decrease in um, heat, right? So what's the decrease in the Q? So we're going to have Q on both. Well, I'm assuming that Q is going from the inside to the outside just because it says that we want to avoid some heat loss, right? So because we want to avoid some heat loss, I'm assuming that it's going from the inside to the outside in both cases. And the idea is that we're going to have a QA and a QB. And we want to know what's the difference from QA to QB in terms of percentage. So there will be um, Q, or original QA, right? And there's a the difference from QB, right? So if we calculate this, this little math, we're going to get the difference between the two, the two of them. If we want to percentage, we want to know, okay, um, around this difference, how much does that represent in terms of the original one, right? So in other words, how much is this in relationship to A? So we can read that by A, okay? Another way for us to think of this is we can find both of them and then we can calculate, so another way, another way for us to think of this is we can calculate both and then we can see, okay, QB over QA will give me a certain number and this number is gonna be between zero and one, right? So between 0% and 100%. If, there, if QB is the same, it's going to be 1. If it's uh, infinitely better, it's going to be 0. So I would expect it to be between 0 and 1. And say it's 40%, then we're going to know the decrease was 60%, and so forth. Okay, so you can do both, both instances, which is the same thing, just different ways to think of it. We're going to start with the radiuses, right? That's where I always tell you a lot of people go wrong. So we want to have R1, and this is the radius from the center of whatever we have there. Do we know what, what do we have? Steam. So from the steam all the way to the inner um, part of the pipe, then we're going to have an R2, this guy here, R2, which is to the outer side of the part, and then we're going to have R3, which is related to the um, outer part of the insulator. And likewise, we're going to have the same thing here. So on this one that's, that's bigger, we're going to have R1, which should be exactly the same as on our pipe A because this did not change whatsoever. But then our R3, we know oops, R3 is going to be a bit thicker. So we know R3 will be different. Yeah? So write those guys down. We're going to have R1 that's uh, 16 centimeters in diameter. So we know that's going to be 8 centimeter radius. Or if we want to have it in metric, we're going to 10 to the minus, oops, sorry, 2 centimeters. Um, our radius, that will be the R1 plus whatever the thickness of the pipe is, and we're given it, oh, we have the outer diameter, so that's 10, so 20 is the diameter, so 10 centimeters is the thickness, same thing as 10 to the minus 1 centimeter, uh, meters. And we also have the R3, which will be, in this case here, for A, that's going to be this 4 centimeter thickness plus R2, R right? So pretty much what we're saying is that this distance here is 4 centimeters. So we're summing that up with our R2 to get our R3. So we get 14 centimeters, right? Which is equal to, which is probably equal to, equal to um, 14 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay, or 1.4 times 10 to the minus 1, if you guys... That's probably better for us to write that way. Okay, and then on the other one, on this guy here, on B, on B, uh, everything, I might move B to this side a bit more. 
on B, everything is the same, right? So R1 is the same 8 centimeters. R2 is the same 10 centimeters. But R3, instead of being 14, will be, what's the difference there? 8, so it's going to be 18. Yeah, and that's pretty much the only difference between the two. So what we can do is, we can calculate the resistance for all the things, uh, and then compare what's the Q that's going QA and QB. Okay, so we can split the screen in half and calculate things for both. Now, on both instances, the amount of resistances that we're going to have from, remember that we want to go from the inside to the outside, so the uh, resistances that we're going to have are related to First, the steam that we have inside, so we have steam there, which will have a convective resistance, right, because it's a fluid. So we can do that, so they have the inside here. I don't know the temperatures, but we have the inside there. So we're going to have a convective resistance, and that's due to the steam. Then we're going to have a conductive resistance, and that's due to the, um, the pipe, right, so the material of the pipe, so let's say conductive resistance. Then we have another conductive resistance and this is due to the insulator. And then finally we have a fourth and last resistance and that is due to the fluid surrounding this pipe, which in this case here we've been told is air, I guess. Uh, we, we're not told. The only thing we know is that we know their coefficients and that's really all we care for, right? So pretty much what we're trying to do is let's account for these uh, for these resistance. So we're going to have a convective over here, convective, a conductive, another conductive, and another convective. Okay, we can account for those. We know that this guy was not going to change whether it's uh, pipe A or B because it's the same diameter. Same for this guy. What does change, however, are these two fellows here, right? This one changes because we have twice the thickness, right? therefore we're going to have more resistance, uh, more thermal resistance. And this one changes because we're going to have a bigger area, right? And we know that the uh, convective resistance is inversely proportional to the area, so we would expect it to have less uh, resistance on the one that has a bigger area. So let's do that. Let's do it. Um, we can start by calculating the resistance for the steam, and we know that that does not change whether it's A or B, so it doesn't really matter. And we know it's convective, so it's 1 over A on the inside, sorry, H on the inside, and the inside internal area. So that will be, what is the inside one? That's uh, 1150, right? So we have, let's put them down here so it's clear for us. So we have 1150 over here, and the same on, on the other side, and then the outside here we have the 10. What's meter squared Kelvin? Right? So this is related to, I don't know, air, possibly, or the fluid that's surrounding this insulator, right? So on both cases, whether it's A or B, it doesn't matter. This, these things are going to be the same. This is going to be 1150 watts meter squared Kelvin. And then the area will be 2 high R1, which is the same for both cases, times L. Our L is conveniently 1, so we have all the data, the data that we did, right? right. Um, so that will be 1 over 1150 watts meter squared Kelvin to pi um, times 8 to the minus 2 times 1. And then we have meters uh, squared over here, because 2 meters are multiplying. Those go away, we're left with Kelvin per watts, which is the unit for resistance, thermal resistance, right? So I got 0017, and then we can jump into the next resistance, which is the resistance due to um, the pipe, right? So then our next one in line is the one due to the pipe. And then again, the pipe, uh, it's going to be the same for both, so it doesn't really matter whether it would thinking about A or B, because it'll be, it'll be the same for both. Nothing really changes in relationship to the pipe. And we know for a cylinder, it'll be the natural log of 2 them, so 2 pi k l. We have everything we need, so let's plug in. Radiuses, so it's 10 centimeters over 8 centimeters. So that's that. Um, 2 pi, what's the k for 
the pipe. Here it is, 50. So that will be 50 watts per meter Kelvin. And we're multiplying that by one meter length. So these guys go away. We're left with the unit we're looking for. And this turns out to be 7 times 10. 7 times 10 to the minus 4 Kelvin per watts. Okay, so little resistance as we would expect from a metallic pipe. Cool, next thing, what is next? Um, now we reach uh, this resistance here. And by the way, let me just uh, make sure that we're on the same page because we have the same setup over here for B, right? The things that will change, however, is this one, this one will be different than this one, this one. The other two will be the same. So now we can go ahead and do um, use the blue one for A. So for A, for calculating the resistance of the insulator, and so we know that will be the natural log of R3 over R2, and this is what changes, right? Because our R3 is different from A to B, um, 2 pi. KL just like before. So in this case here, it will be our R3, which is 14, 14 over 10 for A. 2 pi, what is the K for the insulator? Uh, 0.09 watts per Kelvin meter, and then the uh, one meter length, just there. So the insulator for a is 0 0.595 Kelvin per watts. Okay, and once again, it's very interesting for us to observe what we're getting. Right? We would expect this guy to be the highest value. After all, it is the insulator. Right? That's the whole idea of using an insulator. So we can do the same thing now for B, because we know B will have a different value for this, right? We know B will have a different value because our R3 is different. Okay, so up to this point, everything is exactly the same. But then our R3 is uh, 18 instead of 18 instead of 14. Pipes the same, so that's still 10. This guy's still the same, so it's the same insulator. We're just making it thicker. And that turns out to be 1.04 per watts. Okay, so pretty much we doubled the thickness. And look what happened over here with the resistance, with the resistance. Cool. Uh, what else are we doing now? Now we have to change, we account for the um, resistance on the convection for uh, air, I'm not sure if it's here, but the outside of it. And again, convection is HA. So this one is going to be the outer area, not the internal area. And then the H is the same regardless of whether we're talking about situation A or B, because the convective coefficient was given to be 10. So that is 10 watts meter squared Kelvin. But then the area does change because the area is related to ra radius, and the radius in this case is R3 for uh, situation A times L, which is different than um, the one that we're going to get for B, right? So in this case, will be 1 over 10 uh, to pi constant, and then this guy will be 1.4 times 10 to the minus uh, 1 meters. And length is one meter, so that didn't change throughout the whole thing. And this turns out to be um, 0 0.14. 0 0.14 Kelvin for watts. But we know that for B it will be different because this fellow here will be different, right? So for B, the resistance for air, that will be 1 over each outer area. So all these things are the same. What does change is the radius. So we're going to have 2 pi here, and over here we're going to have 1.8 times 10 to the minus 1 instead of 1.4, and 1 meter length, still same. And then what does this do to our um, resistance? Uh, 0 0.088. Okay, so 
as expected like we talked in the beginning we have more area now so because we have more area we have less resistance right so note that we are um, gaining thermal resistance because we have more insulator but we are losing convective resistance because we have a greater area now it's more exposed so it has more area to exchange heat with the fluid around it okay but now we get to the part that we're interested in because the idea is that they're both in series so we can sum up the resistances for both of them and when we sum them uh, the resistance for both of them we can get what is the equivalent resistance if we had a single one and if you guys recall what we're interested in is what is the relationship between B and A that is how much smaller is Q, uh, QB in relationship to QA right how much less energy is going through and if you think about it if you guys recall the Q our analogy tells us is this right so if I'm plugging those guys in what I'm going to have is delta T divided by the sum of resistances for B divided by delta T sum of resistances for A now it's clearly said on the statement that the delta T's are the same on both instances, right? So that means that all we're doing is summing up the resistances of A and dividing by the resistances for B. Okay, which intuitively, intuitively makes sense, right? And then if we sum these guys up, if I sum all the A up, what I get is 0.711. I sum all these up I get 1.13 right they're the same unit right obviously they're both Kelvin per watt so those guys go away and we're going to be left with the ratio which is dimensionless uh, what did I get 0.63 ish okay so I got 0.63 approximately so what we're saying is um, QB is approximately 63% of QA, right? So what was the decrease in, what was the decrease in uh, heat transfer? Well, that was, we had 100% originally, that was QA, and then we dropped down to 63%, right? So our decrease was 30%. 7%. So 37% decrease is our answer. Other ways to think about it, well, like we said in the beginning, right? Another way to think about it, well, you just do like Yeah, we could do like that. So that would require us to calculate everything, actually calculate QA and QB. But if you look, look at what we're doing, what this equation is, we can break that down into QA over QA minus QB over QA and this is the same thing as 1 minus QB over QA and this we happen to know this we happen to know and that's 0 0.63 so this is just 1 minus 0 0.63 which is 0 0.37 and who would know right same thing so 37% okay uh, if you have questions, either leave a comment or email me and we'll get back to you.